Hey everyone, we've got a new episode of the CHL Top 10 show for you today. As always, my name is Scott Van Kunit, and today we're featuring a pair of high-end prospects for the upcoming NHL draft that will lead the way at the 2024 Kubota Top Prospects game. It's London Knight Sam Dickinson and Spokane Chiefs Berkeley Catton. Sam Dickinson, the top-ranked OHL skater for the NHL draft, was recently named captain of Team Red at the Kubota Top Prospects game. The Knights blue liner is currently at a point-per-game pace, putting a top 10 in the entire CHL amongst defenders. We chat about wearing the C next week in Moncton and what he expects from the event. Sam tells us why the Knights are having so much success in the OHL right now, what it's like to be on the most hated team in the O, and how they're better now than they were a year ago when they lost in the O final. Here's Sam Dickinson. Excited to welcome my first guest today from the Red Hot London Knights, it's NHL draft prospect Sam Dickinson. Sam, how are you doing today? Doing really good. Thanks for having me. Really excited to have you on. I know uh, we're going to get a chance to chat next week in Moncton, but uh, you know the the Knights are on an absolute heater right now—a 12-game win streak, which dates back to December 14th. You know this this June, you're going to hear your name called in Vegas at the NHL draft. But like I said, first I want to talk about the Kubota Top Prospects game. It's next week in Moncton, New Brunswick. Have you ever been out there? I've never been out that way. Uh, never, no. Well, this this event's been going since the mid '90s. It's one of those events that most draft eligibles have circled on their calendar. Um, how excited are you to get out there and participate in the Kubota Top Prospects game? Yeah, uh, it's an absolute honor to you know be able to be selected and, and play in that game. When you think of uh, guys who have played in it in the past, and you know the the skill and and the talent that the, that's going to be there this year. Uh, you know, I'm really excited to to get out there. You know, meet some new guys and you know show what I'm uh, show what I'm all about to, to everyone. Is there anybody in particular that you're you're looking forward to meeting or playing with or against? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot of guys who I grew up with, uh, you know, playing hockey with, with and against. So, you know, it's uh, it'll be exciting to, to you know reconnect with those guys. And then obviously with uh, you know my teammate here, Sam O'Reilly, going out there, it's it's nice to have a, a teammate there and a familiar face that you know I get to see every day out there. So, you know, I'm excited to, uh, to you know and and excited to meet new guys as well that uh, you know I've never met before. Yeah, how cool is it to get to? share the experience with Sam. Uh, You know, it seems like every year there's multiple London Knights. You know, last year it was, uh, it was Bonk and Barky. And the year before that, it was George and Gaz is off, go back on and on and on. Um, How nice is it to go there with a familiar face? Yeah, no, it's nice. You know, uh, like you said, having uh, multiple guys from London going in previous years and, you know, for me and Sam to, you know, continue that going on is is pretty cool as well. And, uh, you know, we're going to be on different teams, which will be a little different, but, uh, you know, I know uh, he's a hard competitor and, you know, he's also going out there to, you know, show everybody what he's about. And, uh, you know, but yeah, it'll be nice to have a familiar face and uh, have a guy that you know well out there. How excited are you to to play against him? Any, uh, any side bets going on between you guys, friendly wagers? Uh, not yet, but now that you say that, we might have to put something down. But yeah, I mean, you know, going against him in practice every day, you know, I'd like to say maybe I've uh, got a few things on him, but you know, he's, uh, you know, he's an unreal player and uh, I know he's going to pull something out to, to try to impress. And, you know, I'm excited to, to see him and, you know, hope he does well. Well, you recently found out that you're going to be captain of Team Red this year. And I know you've worn the C many times before, but what does it mean to you to be named one of the captains at this event? Yeah, again, it's just an absolute honor, uh, you know, not only just to be selected, but then, you know, to have the privilege to be named captain is is uh, really special. And, uh, you know, you think of guys recently who have been captains of the team, uh, you know, to, to kind of be put in, in a in a you know sentence, even with just those guys is is unbelievable. And, you know, I, I couldn't be more proud of myself. And, uh, and you know, I'm really excited to, to be able to, to have that honor. Well, you look at some of the some of the guys that have come before, um, like you said, but even further back, you know, you got Joe Thornton, Patrick Marlowe, Vinny LeCavalier, Rick Nash, Spezza, Stamkos, Tavares, Taylor Hall, Tyler Sagan, you know, Nathan McKinnon, Connor McDavid, the names go on and on. How cool is it to join that list of names? Yeah, like you said, you know, the list goes on and on. And every single year, you know, the two guys who are, who are picked, they're obviously, you know, uh, high level players and then high level people off the ice as well. Um, and, you know, to be added to to a list of guys uh, like that, it's it's, again, just an absolute honor. And uh, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to believe that, uh, you know, a guy like me can, can, uh, have, have this, uh, happen to me. And, you know, it's just, it's really exciting. And, uh, and, uh, just looking forward to it at this point. 
What did uh, what did your teammates tell you about this event? You know, Bonk, Barky, George, Gazazov. What did those guys say? Uh, you know, how how did they enjoy it? What did they think uh, or tell you to to expect? Uh, yeah, I mean, especially recently, I've been uh, talking to my guys a little bit more about it. But even when they uh, when Bonk and Barky came back last year from it, they just talked about you know how uh, how cool of an experience it was. You know, you get to go out and, and hang out with uh, the top prospects for for the draft coming up for for, you know, about a couple of days and, you know, just to learn about new guys, you know, you meet a lot of people, a lot of scouts and, and uh, GMs and stuff going to be out there watching. So they said, you know, soak it all in, take everything, take everything in that's going to be there. And, but uh, most importantly, go there, have some fun and then show you about. Do you put any pressure on yourself or how do you avoid putting pressure on yourself? Knowing that, like you said, there's going to be all the scouts and the GMs that are going to be in attendance watching you. Yeah, I think it's something, you know, uh, you keep it in your mind, but you kind of throw it to the back of your mind. You know, I like uh, a lot of at every game I play, you know, I know people are watching and uh, it's just, you know, putting that stuff in the back of my mind and focusing on just playing hockey and, and making the right plays and doing the right things on the ice and, uh, you know, leaving that stuff uh, to other people to deal with. And, you know, uh, you know, it's I'm lucky that, you know, people get to come watch me and people want to come watch me. And uh, it's just one of those things where you keep it in the back of your mind when you're playing and, you know, you just focus on playing hockey and doing the right thing. Is it nice to have this opportunity to show once again, you know, with your with your age group and the draft eligibles, what you can do against those guys? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's uh, really the only chance you get this year to where it's just guys, you know, that uh, you're competing with to get drafted, uh, drafted with. And, you know, I think, you know, uh, performing well and then showing what I'm about is obviously important. And you know, I'm obviously going to, you know, try my best and then do everything I can to, to, to show that. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, to, for it to be the only opportunity and, and the only chance to have kind of that one game to do it is, is exciting. And, uh, you know, I'm ready. Team Red has historically not fared too well at this event. Um, what do you guys, I know you haven't really played with any, like you haven't played together as a team, but what do you think you guys are going to have to do to kind of buck that trend and get Team Red back into the win column? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's just, Playing, playing hockey the right way. It's obviously, you know, a really high skill level, uh, skill and talent game, but it's just, you know, keeping things simple, maybe, you know, doing the right plays and, and, you know, uh, playing the right way. And that's how, uh, you know, you win these kind of games. I, I always ask guys this. And, and when I talk to people about this event, most fans or people that aren't, you know, haven't watched it a whole lot. Um, they think of it as an all-star game. But when I talk to the players that have played in it or, or about to play in it, they say, you know, it's not an all-star game because we're out there, we're out there to win and and play physical and play hard. How do you see this game unfolding for you? Yeah, I mean, obviously, like I said, you know, there's a lot of really talented players and really skilled players, but, you know, everybody's going to be out there, you know, working their hardest, proving everything they've got. Uh, you know, it's, I'd, I'd uh, be surprised if it wasn't a physical game. And, you know, uh, I think everybody's going to be out there with uh, – high emotions to, to play their best and, and show what they've got. So I think the talent's going to be there, but you know, the effort and the hard work and all that stuff's going to be there as well. Well, after the top prospects game, you know, season, season aside, the next big thing is the draft. And last week, the midterm rankings came out and you're listed as the top ranked OHL skater. I know it's, it's hard to completely avoid the rankings, you know, the central scouting ones or, or other ones that other people are putting out. How much do you pay attention to them or how, how much you try to avoid paying attention to them? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, I'd be lying if I said that I never looked at them. But, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, I think I look at them once and, you know, I just kind of forget about it, put it in the back of my mind and, and, you know, focus on what I can control. I can't control, you know, where the rankings go and what happens with them. I can control how I play and how I perform on the ice. And that's what I focus on and not uh, outside noise and things like that. Just focus on keeping dialed into games and, and focus on winning games and, and playing my best every night. Are you able to use it as motivation at all to, you know, stay at the top or, or work your way ahead of other names that are in front of you? I know you're, you're focusing on your game, but, you know, making incremental gains in your game to try to get higher up. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, if you're not the number one guy, you're always chasing to be that spot. And I think uh, for myself, that's obviously what I'm always striving for. And uh, yeah, like you said, you know, you're obviously just you throw it in the back of your mind and, you know, you remember, you know, you remember it, but you don't really focus on it too much. And you just go out there and perform your best every night. And, you know, if, if you keep performing well and then playing your best, then, uh, you know, things will go good and, and you'll keep jumping up. Obviously got lots of teammates that have been drafted. How much are you able to lean on those guys throughout your draft year experience on on stuff that they've gone through, um, you know, and just kind of on what to expect? 
Yeah, no, that's absolutely huge for me. You know, I, I try to, you know, pick their brains as much as possible. And, you know, some of them may think it's annoying how much I'm asking questions, but, uh, you know, I, I, I want to know everything that there is about, uh, you know, the next level and, you know, with uh, interviews and meetings happening, you know, this year, it's uh, good to ask them questions. You know, I go, I go up to them a lot and, you know, they're, they're excited, you know, for me and, and for the opportunity that I have, but uh, yeah, the help that all those older guys have given me is, uh, is tremendous. And I know that I wouldn't be here without their support and their help. Have you started having any of those meetings? Yeah, yeah. At this point, you know, I've got a, a couple of uh, a couple of them out of the way, and you know, just see what happens through the rest of the year with them. Do you, uh, you know, some guys love talking with teams, and 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 other guys aren't as big of fans of it. Uh, how, are you on the? Do you, do you enjoy it? Yeah, I uh, I'd say I enjoy it. I think it's good, you know, getting to know about teams, getting to know, you know, a little bit about, uh, you know, the people running the organizations and then also for them to get to know more about me as a person off the ice. Uh, I think, you know, I, I always try to portray my, my best self when I do them. And uh, it's just, you know, being honest and, uh, you know, giving a little bit of insight into, into your life away from hockey as well. Do you ever uh, think that you surprise them with any of your answers to stuff? Uh, I think sometimes some of them would be surprised with, uh, with some of the things I've said, you know, sometimes you get some funky wild questions, but, uh, you know, it kind of keeps it loose and, and keeps it a little fun. But, uh, yeah, I'd say there's a couple surprises. Uh, this off season, well, you know, last year you had a, had a big rookie rookie year for you, but, uh, this off season, what was your plan? Like, what did you focus on heading into your sophomore season to try to, to better yourself as a player because currently you know you're you're fourth amongst all ohl blue liners with with 41 points so the offensive game is there and you had the trust of of the hunters last year which is rare so what did you work on this summer to become an even better player uh yeah i think you know obviously you know i was trying to work on everything and and, and become the, you know the best player i possibly can but you know like you said with the points coming in uh you know i definitely worked on my offensive game a little more knowing that uh you know, to be a complete defender, that offense is, is big, but also, you know, not, not sacrificing on the defensive end as well and understanding that, you know, that's that's what I am first. I'm a defender and I play defense. So, you know, keeping that uh, that in check, but also, uh, you know, working on my skating, becoming a better skater and, and really, you know, working on everything to, to be the best, uh, most complete player I can. What's it what's it been like playing for for the London Knights and, and Mark and Dale Hunter? You know, it's like a, a mini NHL club there in London. The, the barn's packed almost every night. How much fun are you guys having there or how much fun are you having there? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's uh, it's the best place to play junior hockey in the world. And, you know, I think everybody that's gone gone through here will say that with, you know, the the front office, the coaches and, and the players that they've produced is, is you know, next to none. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, it does stem from, from everybody who comes here just has fun playing here. Uh, you know, you have fun getting better and, uh, you know, it's a real brotherhood in, in the room and, and the guys that you meet, you know, uh, it's friendships for lifetime and, and guys that, you know, you'll never forget about and you'll always keep in touch with. I think that's the first thing that uh, that everybody will say is, is how tight uh, tight as a group we are. And I think that that's shown this year with, uh, you know, the season we've had. And at this point, we're just excited to, uh, to see what uh, comes for us next and, and into the playoffs. We talked about this a little bit before, uh, before we started recording, but just what's it like being on the nights when you guys are on the road and you walk into the barn and you guys are public enemy number one, pretty much every rink you go to. Yeah, uh, you know, I think uh, a lot of the guys on our team kind of like it being, uh, you know, enemies of a lot of team and, and a lot of teams not liking us. Uh, I think we feed off of it a little bit going into other rinks. You know, we know that uh, every rink we go into, teams are giving us their best game. Everybody wants to beat the London Knights. And, uh, you know, we like that competition and, and we like having that target on our backs because, you know, it means means we're at the top and it means we're one of the best teams. And, uh, you know, we, we feed off that and, and use it to, you know, push us to, you know, a 12 game win streak like we're on right now. Does it give you a little bit more swagger when you walk into the building or when, you, you know, you guys score a goal and the booze rain down on you? Yeah, you know, I think uh, some guys feed into it a little more than others, but, uh, you know, everybody uh, takes it uh, in their own way and, and, and uses it to push them to, you know, keep going, you know, even when teams score uh, on us, you know, it gets pretty loud. And uh, when uh, we score on them, like you said, you know, the booze got coming a little bit and, and we use that uh, to motivate us and, uh, and to push us further. What did last year's run to the final do for do for your confidence? You know, like I said, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, you're you were playing big minutes as a rookie on the nights. And that doesn't happen that often where you see rookies play big minutes like that, especially on the blue line. Yeah, no, it was huge for my confidence. I think, uh, 
you know, really proved to me that the player that I can be and, and to see that the, tr the, the trust that the coaches had in me to, you know, put me out in, in big minutes and, and be able to help produce as much as I could. Um, and I think, you know, just going to the finals as a rookie in general is, is rare and uh, the confidence that it helped me build and, and, you know, the things I learned from from a deep playoff run and the things that, uh, you know, I learned from other guys on the team was, uh, you know, things I'll keep with me uh, through my hockey career. And uh, absolutely, it's helped me to become the player I am right now. What were some of those things that you learned in that deep run? Yeah, I think, you know, it's uh, taking advantage of every single opportunity. Uh, you know, a chance to, to go to the OHL finals is is super rare. And, you know, when you look at the older guys that we had in our team where it was their first opportunity and a lot of them, their only opportunity to do it, you know, uh, you feel for those guys. And, you know, it makes you realize how, uh, how lucky I am to, you know, be playing in London and to be on such a team that, you know, went all the way to the finals and really had a chance to win it. And again, to kind of come back this year and, and be in a spot again to, you know, make a run like that is really exciting. And, you know, I'm excited to kind of pass off things that I learned to younger guys this year. And uh, with the, the lessons our team learned last year and taking them into this year is going to be huge for, for us uh, later in the season and through the playoffs. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the team now then. Um, you're up to seventh in the CHL top 10 rankings this week. What type of team are you guys this year? How similar or different are you from the team that, that came up short last year in the final? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, from last year to this year, we have a lot of returning guys, a lot of important players coming back to our team, which was huge. Uh, you know, last year, you know, a lot of, a lot of guys probably, or a lot of people probably uh, thought we were a younger team uh, going all the way to the finals. And, you know, this year, obviously, a lot of guys just getting one year older and uh, a couple key pickups that we had uh, through the season are going to help us, uh, you know, uh, turn into, you know, the team that we want to be. And, you know, the team that we are is a, a fast, skilled, physical team. Uh, you know, we're deep. Uh, we got four lines and six defensemen that can all play. And, uh, you know, when any get when anybody's on the ice, we know we're dangerous and when we've got the puck, you know, we can make plays. And defensively, you know, this year we've uh, been a, a good defensive team. And that's the first thing that, you know, the coaches are preaching to us is is playing de team defense, you know, is more important than uh, than the points and the goals coming up front. Uh, so it's just playing the right way and, and continuing to do that through the year. Well, you touched on a, on a lot of stuff there, but let's let's first touch on one of the additions that you guys made. How weird was it initially when Michael Simpson joined the locker room? Yeah, no, I mean, you know, him being a kid from London, uh, you know, kind of made it a little less weird. Uh, you know, a lot of guys kind of knew him from before, you know. Uh, he moved in with me as well, so, you know, I'm living with him now. So he'll uh, he'll remind me of last year a lot. But, uh, you know, at this point, it's something we've forgotten about. And, you know, we're all focused on this year. And, you know, uh, having a goalie like him come in with uh, OHL championship experience, a winner, a guy who's played in the Memorial Cup is huge and one of the best goalies in the league, uh, you know, has uh, pushed us, uh, you know, to another level this year. Goaltending, you know, really important. And to have one of the best goalies in the league behind the net for you is uh, is huge. And, you know, we were really excited when we picked him up. Well, like I said off the start, 12-game win streak. I know you said you guys are preaching defense first, but on this win streak, you guys are outscoring your opponents 75-22. to 22. And you have 18 points in 12 of those games. So, like, what's the what's the mood on the team right now? Does the does the net look like a soccer net for everybody? You know, how much fun is it for you guys when when you're humming along like this? Yeah, you know, it's really huge to have you know this uh, momentum that we've built, and you know, we're excited to keep pushing it further and further. Uh, you know, I think the big thing is you know we're playing for each other and we're playing as a team. We're not playing as individuals. You know, guys are excited when other guys score and. And, you know, like you said, uh, some of the guys may think, you know, the, the net's looking a bit like soccer net, but, you know, it's just making the right plays, doing the right things, uh, you know, playing defense first. That's turning into odd man rushes and really good offensive chances for us. Uh, you know, I think, like you said, the, the 22 goals against is more impressive than the 75 goals for uh, keeping the puck out of the nets, you know, pretty tough in this league. And the way we've been able to do it recently has been really impressive. And uh, I know that that's something we're going to keep preaching and keep pushing for. Well, like you said, Everything's clicking right now. You guys have the top power play in the entire CHL, which obviously is going to help with the offensive side. Second best PK in the O and fourth in the entire CHL behind only Saskatoon, Saginaw, and Prince George. So what is it that Dale has you guys working on in practice so that you don't become complacent? Not that Dale would ever let you guys become complacent, but what are the types of things that you guys keep working on in practice as you continue on this streak? Yeah, it's just, you know, pushing each other to get better. And that, you know, starts with the coaches. You know, the practices are still high-paced, high-intensity. Uh, you know, that's what all of us like. You know, there's a lot of battles, you know, a lot of, uh, 
you know, uh, high effort going on and, and it's what keeps us, you know, not complacent and, uh, and pushes us to be better game in and game out. And, uh, you know, it's, it's knowing that, uh, you know, if you don't take, uh, take advantage of your opportunities, you know, they'll find a guy who will. And, uh, I think at this point, all of us have, uh, you know, we've kind of found, uh, a groove and, uh, we're just going to keep kicking with it. 11 players on the, on the roster that are a point per game or better. And, and I'm, I'm going to include Sam on this cause he's only one point off of that. And I'll include Lawrence because he's a point of game with you, even though he wasn't before he came over. So, you know, we, we've talked about this a few times now, but the, how important, especially after making that run last year and, and being a little bit wiser this year, the importance of depth on your team, knowing that you guys can, like you said, roll all the lines and roll all 60. And it doesn't just have to be, you know, Cowan and Barky going out every other shift to try to produce for you guys. How, like, how nice is it to have that? Like, it's a luxury for you guys. Yeah, it's huge. I think, you know, we were, we were similar with that last year. We were a deep team. You know, we had a, a really strong defensive core, you know, one of the best goalies in the league and, you know, a lot of forwards that uh, could do damage and get things done. And, you know, to have that again this year is huge, you know, and you don't have to rely on, you know, a few guys to kind of carry the load for you. And you've got, you know, like you said, 11 guys point per game, uh, getting things done for you is, is absolutely huge. And I think that that's kind of, you know, another big thing that's pushed us, uh, to play the way we are because we know at this point you know uh, if you play the right way the points are going to come like uh, like they are right now and uh, keeping with it and then you know sticking to defense and uh, focusing on uh, just winning games at this point and when you you lose guys to go to world juniors like you like you did with Cowan and Halton in and and somebody the next guy just steps up and takes the role and and carries the torch for you guys yeah, I think, you know, when those guys left, there was obviously, you know, a, a pretty big loss for us having those guys uh, go away. But again, like you said, it was just next man up mentality. We had a lot of guys step up uh, and, you know, play really well while they were gone. And, you know, it's good to have that because it's it's uh, confidence and momentum built for those guys. That's just going to keep pushing us uh, through and through from now until the end of the year to have, uh, you know, a lot of guys uh, build momentum and playing really well right now. Obviously, obviously bonk as well. I don't want people to think that I forgot about him. Um Casper Halton, what is what has he been, what what has his addition been to the club for you guys? And in practice, if he's winding up for a a one timer or a slap shot, are you jumping out of the way or are you gonna stand in front of it? Yeah, uh, I mean he's been a huge addition to the team, obviously. You know, a shot is the first thing that stands out. And, you know, when he winds up for one in practice, you know, I'd like to say I'd stand in the way, but I slide out of the way and let the goalie make the save on those ones. But yeah, I mean, you know, his shot is so deadly, you know, it can go in from anywhere around the ice. And, you know, he's a big guy as well who's uh, physical and, uh, you know, he plays the right way all over the ice. And, you know, the addition he's had to our team has been uh, been huge. You know, he knows how to put the puck in the back of the net. And, you know, he's absolutely uh, dynamic offensive and can make a lot of plays. I was uh, I was reading your, your profile that you filled out for the Top Prospects game, and I noticed um, something interesting, and I wanted to ask you about it. Uh, how does a Toronto boy end up cheering for the Habs um that comes from uh from my dad my dad was a Montreal fan you know his uh his dad was a Montreal fan so at this point it's just you know uh pushing along all the way down and uh you know we'll see what uh what happens in a few months and if I'm still a Montreal Canadiens fan or not um this weekend big series big home and home against the Kitchener Rangers what are you guys going to have to do to take both games and leapfrog them for first in the OHL yeah, obviously, you know, it's a huge weekend, you know, we're all really excited and, uh, you know, we're all really prepared for for a huge weekend, you know, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a first place back to back game for for first place in the league and, you know, they're, they're a high, high powered, high offense team and, uh, you know, we're excited for, for the challenge and the opportunity that's going to come for us, but uh, yeah, it's just, you know, sticking to it, playing the right way and not changing how we've been playing recently because of uh, the team we're playing, it's just, you know, sticking to the system, sticking to how we've been playing, playing the right way and, uh if we play like that, I think everybody in our room knows we're going to get those four points and uh, be first in the league. Even if it wasn't a first game, a first place game, how intense are those Kitchener London games? Because it's got to be one of the best rivalries in in the OHL. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know, especially with the last two years, meeting them in the playoffs is you know uh, elevated the rivalry even more. But anytime you know we uh, we match off against each other, you know it's always a, a battle and a really good game. I think you know. There's a lot of uh, a lot of bad blood between the teams, you know, especially with the playoff series last year and the year before. Uh, 
and you know us being you know two of the most uh, historic and, and best uh, organizations in the OHL and, and in the CHL as well kind of builds to it as well uh, and you know every time we go out there you know we want to win uh, pretty bad against them and they want to win bad against us so it always uh, produces some really good hockey. What's it uh, what's it like for for Brustavich with his with his brother on the other team? Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool, you know, to have uh, those two guys playing off against each other. Obviously, both really, really good players. But uh, you know, uh, we we throw that in every once in a while. You know, we always want to win for for Henry and uh, you know give him the edge over his brother. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's just London against Kitchener, and uh, you know, we always want London to come out on top. Awesome, Sam. Thank you very much for this. Uh, good luck against Kitchener this weekend. Safe travels, and uh, we'll see you in Moncton. Thank you very much. Former first overall pick in the WHL draft, Berkeley Catton is having a monster season for the Chiefs, currently leading the team in goals and points, sitting him seventh in the WHL. The center will captain Team White next week in Moncton. Berkeley tells us about heading to the East Coast for the first time for the Kubota Top Prospects game, what he plans on doing to pass the time on his travel day out there. We also talk about the growth in his game this season and how the Chiefs are hoping to make some noise in the run to the playoffs this year. Here's Berkeley Catton. I am fired up to welcome my second guest today. He's from the WHL Spokane Chiefs. It's NHL draft prospect, Berkeley Catton. Berkeley, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty good. Uh, the snow has finally slowed down a little bit here, so I don't have to go out and, and do my driveway again right now. So, so that's always good. Uh, I wanted to wish you a happy belated birthday. Uh, Sunday was your birthday, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and a and a goal and assist on your birthday and a big five two win. So that's not a bad way to celebrate. No, for sure. Well, you're having a heck of a season. You know, you've only been held pointless seven times this year. This June, you're going to hear your name called in Vegas at the NHL draft. But first, like I did with uh, your former Team Canada teammate Sam Dickinson earlier, I want to talk about the top prospects game. Um, how closely have you followed it in the past and have there been any games that have uh, stood out to you? Yeah, I think it's something when I'm, when you're younger, you always kind of sort of keep an eye on and, you know, it's kind of looking back last year, I have, you know, from Saskatoon, I have a whole bunch of buddies that were in that game and, uh, you know, Riley Hyde who ended up winning a player of the game that game for his team. And then Kalen Lynn ended up fighting. So, you know, I've, it's pretty cool watching buddies in the past. And then now that it's my turn, I'm really looking forward to it. Well, next week, you'll be in Moncton, New Brunswick. Have you ever been that far out east? Nope. I've been uh, – Ontario is the furthest east I've been out, out there. So, yeah, it should be pretty cool. Um, what are you most looking forward to about the event? You know, I think it's – you're with the best players in your draft class in, in the CHL. So, you know, just to be surrounded by those people and see kind of how they prepare and – you know, just to see them on the ice from all sorts of different leagues. I get to see guys from the WHL all the time, but, you know, not from the O or, or the Q. So um, I'm really going to take this in and just, you know, kind of enjoy it. So, I'm, I'm again, I'm really looking forward to it. Well, you recently found out that you're going to be captain of Team White this year. What does it mean to you to be named as one of the captains at this event? Yeah, again, it's, you know, for people to look at me with that eye of honor is, uh, is pretty cool. So, you know, it's a pretty short-term event, but, I think I'm really, you know, going to try and use my leadership skills to the best of my ability as I think it's one of my, my stronger assets. So yeah, it, it'll be, it'll be, a, it'll be very cool. So. Have you looked at the list of some of the guys that have been captain at this event before? I've looked at the list of guys that have played in that game, but you know, thinking of guys that could have been captain would just be, would be pretty unbelievable. Well, I'll rhyme off a few of them for you here. So you got, Joe Thornton, Patrick Marlowe, Vincent LeCavalier, Rick Nash, Jason Spezza, you know, Stamkos, Tavares, Hall, Sagan, McKinnon, McDavid, obviously, yeah, Bedard last year, Matejchuk. Um, do you know who the last Spokane Chief player was to be captain? I know I'm throwing one at you. Was, was Ty Smith or? Yeah, yeah, you got it. Ty Smith in 2018. Nice. Cool. So pretty pretty cool to to join that that list of, those list of uh, players and and then Ty Smith as well. Awesome, that's that's unbelievable. Uh, have you talked to like some of your buddies that you know you you mentioned some names there um, that have played in this event as to what you should expect next week? 
yeah, again, they, you know, there's, it's going to be lots of new things, new people, and obviously lots of eyes on you. But I think kind of what they've told me is, you know, again, it's just to enjoy it. It's, uh, it's a pretty cool experience that only happens once. So, you know, take it all in and, and yeah, just kind of run with it. Well, like I said, there's going to be lots of scouts and GMs that are going to be there. Do you, how do you treat it like a, like any other game? Cause I, you always have scouts and GMs that are going to be watching all of your games or do you not treat it like a regular, uh, a regular game knowing that it's something different? Yeah, I think it's kind of, it can be in your head before the game and, leading up to it. But I feel like once you're on the ice, it's the same old game you've been playing since you're, you know, four years old. So once you're on the ice, everything kind of goes away and it's just about how, how good you can be the next shift. But, you know, leading up to it, I think it'll be, it'll be a lot. And I'm sure there'll be some conversations with those people there. But again, once you start playing, it's the same old game. How much more special is it for you to share the experience with your goalie, Dawson Cowan? Yeah. Again, just, it's unbelievable how hard that guy's worked to get where he is and, couldn't be more proud of him. He comes in here every day and works his bag off. So, uh, again, just credit to him, and he's going to run with this as well. And and I know you know a bunch of the the other players from the other leagues and and from the WHL from playing internationally with them, like I've said before. But uh, is there anybody that you're excited to play with or against at this event, or just reconnecting with those guys? Yeah. Again, uh, you no. Know, for example, Tej, me and him fought earlier this year. And then. We're still great buddies. It didn't really impact anything, but you know, to be with him will be cool again. And then, you know, just for my league again, that Parasak who didn't even play last year and now he's lighting it up. So he's obviously doing something right. So to see him and then, uh, you know, Dickinson, who you're talking about before, uh, really classy guy and obviously an unbelievable hockey player. So, you know, it'll be lots of watching and learning and, and hoping to meet some new friends along the way. Well, Historically, Team White has had a real advantage in the win-loss column at this event. Um, they've won the last four years in a row. So what are you guys going to have to do to try to make it five straight in the game? Jeez, uh, I think, you know, kind of putting, uh, like I was talking about before, all the, the, the star factor or the, you know, holy and just kind of treat it like another game. We all know we're there for a reason. So play to your strengths and and like I said before, just enjoy it. If something doesn't go right or whatever, just wash it away and, and just keep going. It's no different than it's, it's obviously a big deal of a game, but it's no different than, than any other one. You just, uh, yeah, just enjoy it would be probably the biggest thing off to say. Yeah. It's not going to make or break anything. No, for sure. Uh, well, Sunday's going to be a long travel day for, for you and Dawson. What are you guys loading up to, to watch or, or listen to on your flights? Uh, Dawson's actually been big into like me too, I guess, but we both got guitars. So maybe we'll watch some videos on, on how to play that. He's pretty big into that. And, you know, maybe when we get into Canada, I think our flight path takes us through Canada, get some Tim Hortons as we don't get them much down here. So I'm sure it'll be a lot of, you know, some Tim's and we'll watch probably a couple movies together. So that, that'll be about it. Well, let's, we'll switch uh, focuses. And, you know, last week the midterm rankings came out. You're listed as the the third ranked WHL skater. You know, it's hard to completely avoid these rankings. I know you don't want to put a whole lot of emphasis on them, but how much do you pay attention to them, you know, either using them as as motivation or you know, whatever. Yeah, that that one probably would have been used as motivation a little bit, but like you said, it's it's tough not to look at them, but they they are going to show up or you'll hear people talk about them, but you know, at, at the end of the day, it's just one team that gets to pick you. It's not, it's not all all of them, right? So you just need one team that likes you. And um, yeah, again, it it that's a little bit of motivation, but it's not really rocking my world or anything. It's just kind of, you now it's a ranking, whatever. It's, there's a lot of them, so you know, just keep kind of moving forward and and you know, take in what your coaches and people who you trust are saying to you, and and try and build and get better each and every day. Well, who are some of the guys that you lean on uh, for advice? You know, uh, Mike Chase on who's my agent. Uh, he's been huge for me these this past couple of bit just with video and reconstructing my game. Uh, you know, he sends me clips all the time, and you know, just going back to same old my dad, who's kind of been there for me through everything. And uh, yeah, he's just a probably person I trust the most in the world with you know this sort of stuff. So I'm always talking to him and and Mike and 
you know, even my buddies on my team and back home, just having a chat, even not about hockey can be the best thing sometimes with all this, you know, pressure or whatnot. So yeah, there's, there's tons of people that go into it, but those are just a couple to them. Well, being the first overall pick in the, in the WHL draft, you're no stranger to pressure and expectations. What are some of the things that you do to deal with those, you know, those expectations, you know, to, to get your mind off of the hockey, I guitar obviously would be one yeah. thing I'm assuming. Yeah, no. So I'm, yeah, like I'm a, I'm a real thinker, I guess. I'm always thinking about the hockey and stuff and sometimes it can almost hurt me a bit. So I've kind of found, you know, movies or what, something that can just get my mind completely off of it. So, you know, me and my buddies will go to a movie or just we'll get a couple going, uh, you know, on a, on an off night or whatever. So, yeah, I'd say movies, guitar, I'm always trying to, you know, learn a new skill or whatever. So guitar and movies have been probably the biggest thing this year just to get my mind off it. Well, and with all the road trips, it's... Uh, yeah, exactly. To... Lots of time on the bus, so... <clears throat> and and just like at the Prospects game, how much nicer is it to have a guy like, like Cowan going through the same draft year process with? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's really nice honestly just if you you know even with the flight itinerary or the, the off ice on ice skills testing we kind of just ask questions with each other and our trainer or whatever so it's nice to have a guy who's going through it with you and especially from your from your own team and um, I think we're both going to go there and represent Spokane well so it'll it'll be very it'll be very cool and then as far as um, NHL teams are you guys kind of comparing notes on on interviews that you've had with teams so far yeah, a little bit, but it's different. He's a goalie, so I think he's talking to different people and, you know, different questions maybe. So, uh, yeah, but we've been talking a little bit about it. But, again, you know, sometimes when we're away from the rink, it's almost just put the hockey stuff aside. And But, you know, when we're at the rink, we'll bounce it, bounce ideas or, you know, conversations off each other a little bit for sure. Well, how important is it to, you know, take that step aside from hockey to clear your mind and, and kind of have that mental reset. Yeah, I think that's probably the biggest, one of the biggest things I've had to learn this year because I'm I'm completely obsessed with hockey. I'm not even going to lie, but uh, it can almost hurt you sometimes. Like I said before, you just need to, you know, put it aside and, and think about something else or do something else. Then, you know, when you come back, you almost feel a little bit more refreshed or or whatever. And um, so, yeah, I think that's been something that's very big for me. And, you know, people who are going to be going through it, some of my younger buddies, I'll, that would definitely be something that I that I kind of tell them to do. Make sure you get a little break from it and always make sure you're enjoying yourself. Well, what you're doing is obviously working, you know, seventh in WHL scoring with 27 goals and 64 points, both career highs for you. You know, last year I, you finished as a, a minus 36. This year <laughs> you're a plus 11 yeah. already. So how have you improved? How have you evolved as a player from – you know, last year or or even your nine game stint in twenty one twenty two to the player that you are now. Yeah, I think it's all just about growing as much as you can each and every. You know, last year we we weren't very good. Like we struggled quite a bit, and so I think I learned lots on how much it sucks to get scored on all the time and lose every game. It kind of fueled my fire a little bit in that sense. So I think coming to this year, I obviously wanted to be a plus, and even going into the second half, I want to you know, get that to a plus 20 or whatnot. So I think that's something I've really been focusing on. That obviously starts with the D zone, which is probably something that, you know, I came into the league, you're a young guy, you just kind of run and gun, get the fucking go score, but you come into this league and there's guys that can play. So you got to learn the defensive side of the puck, which is something I've probably learned. And I've been growing a lot at these past couple years, I guess. So that's been huge for me. And you know, yeah, like I said before, it's always about every day, just, you know, asking questions and coming in here with a mindset of wanting to get a little bit better. How did last year's experience with, you know, with the losing and the, the lack of success that you had, how did that help you as a leader on the team this year for the, the younger guys coming in? Yeah, so it's kind of, you know, it's kind of funny. You go from losing all the time with Spokane and then go to the Holinka Gretzky and you know, you're winning all the time, you won a gold medal. So I think that just showed me the difference in just how much better winning really is and playing winning hockey really is. So, you know, I think just sometimes when you're losing, you get in the tracks of just bad play this, you can wash it away or whatever. But I think, you know, reminding guys that, you know, we want to be the best uh, as much as we can be in every play, want to make the best play possible. So, you know, I think we've just been, we've stepped it up a notch here a little bit in that sense. And, 
we want the best out of every single guy and not getting that track of losing or that mindset really. Well, and, and you guys have made some significant games this season. You, you know, you're still a fairly young team, but yeah. how does, how does coach Ryan Smith have you playing this season? What's the, what's the identity of the team? You know, I think we're not really the biggest team, but we're quick and, then fast. So I think, you know, even with our four check, just let's, let's take teams down uh, four check and then we keep it in there. And, uh, you know, kind of the best defense is offense, right? You can't really, uh, you know, if, however you say that, but yeah, it's, so we've just been wanting to hem teams in and, you know, play with speed and, and be more direct towards the net. And when we do have to defend to, to really put our best foot forward and, and want, and want to defend. How much fun are you having centering Berthelet and Roulette right now? Yeah, it's it's been really great. Again, two you know two twenty year old guys who uh, who have lots of experience. So you know, even if I have a question, or whatever they've been through it, I'm sure. So to ask them and you know Connor, who's uh, you know was drafted and then Chase, who I think will get some sort of pro contract here, both of them, I guess. But you know, they they want to improve as much as I do as well. So they've been a ton of fun to play with super smart players, quick players. So we're, we're all kind of similar in that sense. And it's been going really well so far. Yeah. You guys are one of the most dangerous trios in, in all of the WHL right now. What, what, what kinds of things have they taught you as, as you know, the Wiley vets on the team? Um, it just kind of like how long of a, of a season it is. Right. So, you know, one bad shift your period, let's, let's wash it and let's get to work in the next two. So, I think uh, that kind of sense and just how important the details really are, uh, you know, they they seem to get pucks off the wall all the time and make quick little plays and, you know, a whole bunch of little plays lead to the big boom of a goal or a whatever. So I, I think they've kind of taught me that this year. Do they ever say, you know, uh, it goes, it goes by fast. I find when <laughs> yeah. I, whenever I talk to the, talk to the the older guys they they always say that the the vets told them it goes by fast and it's and it's cliche but no, man, they didn't they, believe they, them but it really does oh yeah for sure and they said it's it's absolutely crazy they're already 20 years old they still feel like they're 16 in a sense just getting used to everything but it's pretty cool even myself you know i'm heading towards this last half of my second year already which is crazy it feels like you know i was 15 kind of it, it still feels the same in a sense when you're just you know, you want to play and whatever, but it's, yeah, it's, it's a, it's crazy. Well, there's always, there's always room for, you know, personal improvement and team improvement. What areas are you guys trying to focus on so that you can get into that playoff spot and, and get some playoff experience this year? Yeah, I think just, you know, limiting our, the amount of goals against us. I, I don't think we're a team that trouble has trouble with scoring. We score four or five goals every game. It's, sometimes the other team scoring six or seven. So I think just eliminating our little brain farts almost that we have sometimes and, and just kind of, you know, playing a full 60 and, and dialing every part of our game in. And I, I think everyone in our room believes that we're going to be a playoff team and do some damage while we're there. And, and what does it do to the, in the locker room when, when you guys add players like Van Olm and Feist? Yeah, it's been awesome. And uh, Axtrim, too, who came from Sweden, it's been awesome for us. So, you know, just a little bit of depth, a little bit of age, you know, helps our young guys out a lot. And some of our young guys had a pretty heavy load there at the start of the year, which is not which is never easy, as I experienced myself last year. But so it'll be nice to them. And they have a lot, a couple more guys to learn from now. And, and you know, it's just they're they're all guys that are going to help our team out when, when we need them, which is going to be coming up here soon and at the end of March. And, and, you know, Van Olm with, with the Memorial yeah. cup experience that he has, like what yeah. has, he, has he talked to you guys in the room about, you know, the types of things that to kind of expect if to be able to, as a team, take that next step. Yeah, for sure. And even just, you know, kind of watching him, he's, he's played here two games now and been here for a bit. Just seen a, you know, serious, he's taken practice and how, you know, he can run the bench. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't like the little mistakes and you can tell he's just been through it. So, you know, for a guy like myself and even our 20 year olds, just, uh, you know, Connor's been through it too a little bit, but just asking him and what it really takes, he's seen it, you know, twice now he's been in the Memorial Cup. So, uh, yeah, just asking him and he knows how to do it. So kind of hopping on his back in a sense sometimes with that. 
you you kind of mentioned it earlier um saying you'd like to get to uh to a plus 20 but what were some of you some of the other goals that uh you know maybe team goals that you guys had this year and and other personal goals that you might have had for yourself heading into this season yeah so i think for our our team it was just get to the playoffs you know obviously there's little goals with where we want to end up but at uh, the the big goal is just to get to the playoffs and as i think when once we get there we got guys who can really play and and we'll do some damage there so that's kind of just been our number one goal ever since we've kind of rolled up to camp but then for myself like you talked about the, the defensive side and the you know being a plus is huge for me I was, had the green jacket last year of a whatever 36 it was kind of embarrassing so I don't really like that and I want I want to make sure that you know that's a that's a pretty important statistic as people look at it so uh, I really want to have a, a good score that way then you know, just trying to dominate the game as much as I can. I think when I'm playing my game, I'm pretty dominant. So just having that mindset and want to be the best player uh, every night if I can be. So that'd be kind of my goals this year. And, and we've touched on this a little bit too, but, uh, you know, wearing a letter in Spokane this year, you've you've worn a, a C for Canada multiple times. What type of leader are you on those teams in Spokane? What type of leader are you? I think probably the – best way to put it would be a leader by example you know i'm i'm always gonna in the gym i'm working hard uh in practice i'm i like to compete and you know in games i think i work hard and 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 set a good example that way but i'm also not afraid to you know use my voice in the room or 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 talk to guys and i think i'm a guy you know people can always talk to and trust so if something's not going right or whatever they're upset i think i'm good with talking with them and you know everything is kind of for the best of the team that's the way I think of it so if one guy's off it can mess up everything so making sure everyone's feeling good and you know it it really helps everyone out in the end to be a, a leader by example and then to be able to 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 call guys out like you have to obviously be working hard yeah. how important is it for you to be able to you know practice what you preach I guess yeah no exactly and you know as you kind of say that it I look at guys like I train with Kevin Korczynski in the summer and, you know, seeing how hard he works in the summer is kind of carried into this. Sorry, I was kind of off topic, but I just want to mention that. Uh, I've always kind of grown up with guys that really work hard. So I think that's part of the reason I do. And yeah, I think you see guys sometimes that will talk about it and not really do it. And I think, yeah, you got to let your kind of action do the talking in a sense, I guess, if that makes sense. Uh, I think that's kind of what, Lots of the greatest leaders, you know, like the the Taves and the Crosbys, you watch them and you just know that they want to win and want to be the best. So I think that can be the loudest thing sometimes. Yeah, and they know if 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 you're getting called out by by them, they they really see something because exactly. they're they're doing the same thing. Yeah, or expect the same thing of themselves. Right. Well, I'm going to throw a date out at you. Just a couple more things here. So I'm going to throw a date out, and you tell me if it if it rings a bell to you. I'm sure it, it might. Uh, December 16th, 2022. I'm terrible at dates. I'm not even going to lie. No, no, that's okay. Uh, you were on a, a road trip. First, first game in your hometown. Oh, yeah. I would have had no idea, honestly. I'm terrible <laughs> okay. at dates. Yeah. Well, what what was that what was that like getting to getting to play in Saskatoon? You got to take the opening face off. Uh just kind of take me through that. Yeah, it's funny. You know, you go to a game in Cologne or whatever and you look in the crowd and you don't really recognize anyone and then you're at home and you're like, I think I went that was my teacher in grade four. You know, you just it's funny, you recognize faces. So um that was pretty cool then going to games in Saskatoon since I've been little. And thinking it was the biggest, you know, the biggest deal ever, which it is it is a big deal, obviously. But, you know, you, when you're a kid and then, you know, you're on the ice, whatever, 10 years later. So uh, it was honestly surreal. And, you know, I think just to start the game, I was almost a little bit like uh, out of it in a sense because I was just taking it all in a little bit too much. But, yeah, that ended up being uh, we played hard at the end and we didn't end up winning, but it was a really cool experience. It was really awesome. You you finished with a with a goal and two assists. Got named third star of the game. Like you said, it was a it was an eight five loss. Yeah. Um, I guess for for friends and family, it was probably the best possible outcome for them because I'm I'm yeah. sure they're they're rooting for you, but they still right. want the want the blades to win. Is that how it was? Yeah. No, for sure. And 
I w- honestly was playing pretty bad this <laughs> first two periods, and I think the hockey gods helped me out a little bit in the third to a couple good bounces and whatnot. But yeah, I'm I'm really glad I got to score and uh, you know put up an apple or two. So yeah, that, I think that I have to give credit to the hockey gods and that one they are helping me out. Well, you guys are finally back home this this weekend after a seven game road trip. What are you guys going to have to do to to cool off the you know the red hot Everett Silver Tips? Yeah, um, you know we got lots of good hockey teams coming up here these next four or five games. So I think it's uh, it's just about you know we know that they can make plays and whatnot. So almost and they work hard. So we that means we got to work hard too with Everett. They're one of the hardest working teams in the league. So you know if you don't if you don't show up for a game like that they'll they'll show you up so we gotta we know how big of a deal it is and how big of a game it is for us tomorrow so we're uh yeah we're gonna come ready that'd be the biggest thing for us and then and then you've got Wenatchee on on Saturday obviously there's no geeky in Savoy but still a dangerous team yeah yeah for sure uh you know that ESO guy and Sword who was here too the their power play is pretty pretty scary and Hauser and Net. so you know and I in this league, there's never really an easy game or whatnot, so they're gonna, it'll be a fun one for sure. And I haven't played in that barn too much, but got to play there once, and it was pretty fun. So, yeah, we're looking forward to that one as well. We'd like to get you know four points coming up this weekend. Awesome. Berkeley, thank you very much for this. Good luck this weekend. Safe travels on Sunday, and, and we'll see you in Moncton. Yeah, thank you very much. That's all for today. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the CHL Top 10 Show. Leave a comment and let us know who you'd like to hear from next. And as always, make sure you like and subscribe as we continue to chat with some of the biggest and brightest names across the Canadian Hockey League.